and um, doing it outside of using a box name. You know, they wanted to make sure that they knew how to do it themselves so that they can edit anything that they come along. So I have a short video that talks about editing eighth inch to quarter inch to be able to change the uh, tab sizings on the box for the material. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a box and um, discuss like it's going to be a simple box, discuss um, where you want to put your tabs for the design of the box. And then um, if you want to go and change it from eighth inch to quarter inch, how the parts that you would want to change for it. So um, first to get started, I'm going to share my screen over to, let me find it here, Adobe Illustrator. And okay, so you should see um, some of my previous projects and we're not going to go there right now, but we are going to create a new file. And um, this is something that I say every time that I have a, a session on here is that I always work in a 19.2 by a 10.8 uh, artboard. The reason for this is simply because um, most people are getting a 12 by 20 board and the Glowforge works at 10.8 by 19.2. That's the maximum that you can do in that machine. And I believe in a couple of other machines that are about the same size as the Glowforge. So um, I start with that. And then if anything needs to be bigger, I can always increase the size of my artboard. Um, like right now, I actually have one that I'm designing at, uh, you can kind of see it down here, I'm designing at a two foot by four foot. So that's actually 24 inches by 48 inches. And all I did was just increase the artboard to um, kind of, you know, collect that space. I actually worked on it with the little artboard over in the corner, um, but then I resized it. And I always go to landscape. And that's simply because I normally either work in um, a landscape format for my designs. Sometimes I do do portrait and I'm probably gonna be doing more of those. But for me lately, I've been doing landscape and it also is just kind of like having a nice big board that you can um, you know, kind of riff on or work on or do whatever you need to do. So that's what we're gonna do today. And give it a minute. My Illustrator has been uh, acting up when I've been doing things like uh, writing Zoom with it. <laughs> so I'll probably eventually have to uh, upgrade this computer. Um, it hasn't been a priority yet because it keeps working for me. So the first of all thing we wanna do is we're gonna make a um, square box. So it's gonna be four sides and um, if we want to decide how big it's going to be, uh, normal votives are about three inch to four inch. So we can easily just come over here, come to the rectangle tool. It's also the M. I don't generally use the M for this. I just kind of go over here into the toolbar and find it. I think the rectangle is the default. So you should see that first whenever uh, you're fresh going into Illustrator. So I'm going to just click and you can see it's giving us um, dimensions that I can choose. This right now is not constrained, but I'm going to constrain them so I only have to type in one number and we're gonna go to three and a half and split the difference between the two. So that's giving us our base and this actually can be our bottom. And we'll come back to that and um, we'll add tabs or slots to it and able to be able to uh, use that as the bottom. I personally don't like to have fills in. There's a way to change the default to not have a fill white. Um, I tried it a couple of times every time uh, Adobe updates Illustrator and uh, I download it from the from the uh, control center, um, I think it kind of overrates it. So 
I've kind of given up. <laughs> I just go ahead and click this button, which says none, which is actually transparent. So no fill. All right. So we're going to take this, select that, and we're going to hold alt to duplicate it. And this is going to be the width of our side. So you can see that if we stay within this width, now we make a side, then it'll fit within in here. So one of the things you have to understand about doing a box is the fact that when you decide on tabs, you have to increase on one side and decrease on the other. Um, so for example, right now, this is meeting the edge right here. So if we wanted to make tabs here, I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom into this piece. Um, I like to make a tab that isn't necessarily, um, you know, the, the uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like the zipper, you know, where you have tab, 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 all the way down the sides. I like to do um, a couple of tabs that can kind of work as a ornament towards the entire box design. So um, I'll go ahead and show you now how I, I think I'll do three here so that it'll be easier to place. Um, first of all, our width is going to be the material width, which is going to be eighth inch. So I generally do 0.12 because that's the actual uh, material thickness that you get. You guys want to caliper your material thickness and then you can work with that. Um, and then that way you'll make sure that your boxes, you know, whatever your design is that uses tabs will always be a nice snug finish. Um, I haven't had to modify anything for the uh, curve on these. I mean, they generally tuck in quite nicely. So um, I do use uh, CA glue, which is basically super glue. Um, I use stick fast or, um, I think I just got a new one. Oh, I can't remember the name right now. There's a few of them that I like to use. Uh, shoot, they keep sending me texts and everything and I can't remember. Anyway, uh, but you don't always have to. And I'll show you, uh, probably in another, um, session, how to do tabs that sit down into the base versus having just a loose box. And then that way, the ones that sit in the base actually don't need tabs on the sides at all, which is kind of nice. Then you can have a design that doesn't need to have anything intruding. But for today, we're going to do a 0.12 tab. That's the thickness of my material. And the height, I'm going to go with probably a 0.25 height. So it's not more, it's not much more than what we need to just kind of, you know, work the material together. It gives you kind of that, uh, that little bit. So I'm going to drop this here at the top and here, let's get it to snap. I think they, they messed with snap a few versions ago. It's never felt quite right since. I'm going to go into Y mode, which is um, basically just your lines mode or outline mode. So then that way you can see if you're actually on the edge, and I'm not. So I'm going to actually just take that right over. And what I like to do is I like to duplicate, because right now this is at the very top of the design. Um, I want to go down some to have it kind of hidden at the top. So we're going to take this and we're going to drag it. I'm going to duplicate it down again with the Alt key. And we're going to drag it right down there and then delete this guy. And so then we have a nice, let me zoom back out here again. We have a nice spot on the uh, wall here that we're going to use to just tie it in just by a little. I'm going to go back out of outline mode. Since this is on the edge now, I'm just going to drag it down with Alt. And you should be able to see the, see the cursor move, but it hasn't. So I'm going to drag this down in here. Or actually, no, you know what? 
this is where I want to pull down some guides. So if you've not worked with guides, they're really, really helpful. Um, you go up to the ruler and you just pull them down. You get horizontal and vertical, and there are ways to do the radial guides, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, but right now you can pull to the center of an object. So like right now we have the center horizontally. We're going to go to the center vertically. And I think I excellent. I left that. The vertical tends to like to drift a little. So always make sure it's actually going through the vertical. You can see right here, it's not, it's kind of tucking to the left. So I'm gonna undo control Z. And we're gonna try that again, tucking a little bit to the right to see if we can get it on there. And that looks pretty good. We're not doing anything that's really dependent on um, really careful math here. <laughs> so um, what I'm gonna do with this one then is I'm gonna pull this down, duplicate it with the alt key, and I'm gonna pull it right there. So it'll tell you when it's intersecting that guide. And uh, then that looks pretty good. We can actually take this guide and we're gonna come over here to the rotate tool. And if you click and hold down, you can get to the reflect tool. And this then lets you basically copy um, like with a mirror. So that's why it's called reflect, um, either horizontally or vertically. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it we don't want to go. It gives you this helpful little um, target of the center of the piece you're on. And we don't want the center of the piece we selected. We actually want the center line for the piece we're working on. So I'm going to hold Alt again, and we're going to click the guide. And you can see it flipped it right there because it's preset to do vertical but we actually want it to do horizontal and you'll see that copy. And then you have that in the exact same spot that the top one is. And that saves you a little time. So now the key thing with this is you've kind of already got everything um, figured out right here. Uh, when you have tabs, I'm gonna pull this in some, uh, when you have material you're meeting, then you always have to make room for the material. So it's kind of like when you put uh, two logs together when you're building a uh, log cabin. Um, you have to stack them up so that they match the edges and make the sharp corner. So in this case, um, I put these out and we're going to drag this in to the inside edge. There we go. Okay, so when you have the inside edge, you can see now you have your tabs, which is great. So that's the easy part is control Z, undo. You can see you have your gaps, which I'll show you in a second. And then you have your tabs once you pull it in some. And then that way you're, you're basically tongue and groove on every corner and you don't have to worry about the um, the amount of your material because it all should end up in that box when you're done. Okay, so we're gonna take these guys and then we are going to flip them. I'm gonna come over to this guide in the center and we're going to go vertical. Oops, I guess that isn't quite center, is it? <laughs> all right, so we're gonna take these back just by one and um oh it's my click i'm sorry i clicked off center uh so there you can see that we're matched and i'm not going to do more with that yet until we decide what we're going to put on there and how we're going to design this um i know a lot of people uh want to do something that's either you know, fun for the kids, or um, you want to do something that has a nice, let's say it's a floral design that you're um, coming in with. So one of the things that you can do, and let's see what I have here. 
I'm going to control O to open, and I am going to come down to, oh, no, cancel. Where did I put it? My downloads. That's not going to happen. Come over here, and then I go to E, and we're going to go to downloads. So there, um, we have downloads that slowly go and I have no idea what some of these are because they're named oddly. Here we go. Okay, so uh, what have we got here? We have a bad bunny. I'm not even sure what that is. Let's see what this says here. And I don't know. Let's see if we can find it again. Bad Bunny, and let's open it. Okay, so I don't know why I have this, but this gives us some stuff to work with. So um, in this case, let's grab the sun and I think I'm going to grab these seagulls as well. Oops. So in this case, we're going to go in and grab the sun in a different setting. I think that's TV show or cartoon. I don't know. So we're going to bring that down here. And this is from Creative Fabrica, I believe. I'm not quite sure where I got it. I normally only get from Creative Fabric at design bundles. So this may have been something that they decided to uh, put on as well. Um, I'm going to size this up so we have a nice uh, sun. This actually will work really well if we put a candle inside because you should get the light outside of this. And we can actually go through and do some sort of a radial thing on this big piece if we don't want to cut it out as a big half. So you can see that I really like this section here. And let's see. I'm just going to take the fill off of that. So we're going to flip that over to the red line. All right. I'm going to separate them. Okay, so I normally do my cut lines as red um, just because it helps remind me what things are doing in the file. Uh, you can pick any color you like. Um, if you're using Glowforge, then you can assign it once it gets um, into the UI. Uh, if you're using light burn, then you can assign it to one of your channels. You can either use red or black. I think they default to black in light burn. Um, so what I'm going to do here is this is kind of irregular around that half moon. So I'm going to pull it up a little. And then for the half moon, I'm actually going to resize that down a little and give it more of a gap. So we still have it, but it looks a little more um uniform this way so since we can like i said before we can go through and, and cut this up in the pie slices then i can just draw a line of which actually should okay let's yeah let's start with a line and then we'll cut it from there but i'm not going to spend too much time on the design on here so we'll just do a couple lines so I'm going to click here and I'm going to hold shift to make sure it goes straight down and back to V, my black arrow. And now I'll be able to take this and instead of flip with a reflect tool, I'm going to rotate. And so you can see that if we want this to rotate this way or that way from the bottom, 
then we select the bottom as the rotate point. So if you're ever wondering how that works is that you select the rotate point and then it will rotate around the point that you set for it. So right now, let's look and see what um, 12 degrees looks like. And I think it should be working. Here, let's cancel. And what happens? So I have that. I have a rotate, I have alt, and I'm clicking this for 12 degrees. I'm going to take two. Let's go to I don't know. <laughs> My illustrator must be acting up today because I've done that so many times. All right, so we're not going to bother. Like I said, this is not about designing the lamp itself. It's about um, making the lamp uh, or the box or you know whatever you're going to do with it. So right now, um, we have the first piece, and we're going to select the whole thing, hold Alt, which will copy, and we will pull all of this over by one. And now we'll address the tabs. So on one of these, you only need to make one pair since you're making a square, then you can just cut one or cut two of each. You don't have to design two of each unless you want to have it in your file just um, for later. Or if you want to do something like a scene around the whole box, then that way, um, like for engraving or something, then that way you can have it go uh, seamlessly around the corners. So uh, let's see here. Um, the first thing we want to do is decide if this is going to be a slot or a tab um, piece. And right now I'm going to go with starting with slots. And so you can take all these guys and remember we're working with boxes here so we're going to take all these guys and we're going to make sure that the program knows that they are in the front which means they're in front of this big box so when i select the big box and i say minus front it removes them and then that way we have the slots for the piece and same thing here we're going to just select the whole thing and minus front doesn't work. And the reason for this is because whenever you do minus front, it brings whatever you're working with, in this case, this big box that's been affected by that, to the front. So anything else now is behind it. So to make sure that you are able to do this fairly quickly, you go to object, arrange, and send it to the back. And then that way you don't have to like send backwards one, send backwards two, or whatever it is. Or you can alternatively do like I did before, select these three and bring them to front. So either way, you just want to kind of make it so that you know what the order of these pieces is. And we're going to come back and minus front. And it looks like those were a little bit not there. I remember we had some issues with this when it was getting aligned. So oops. Let's do select the big box and we're going to pull this. There. Forward so that they align. Select again and minus friend and it's nice. So now you need the slot panel. So in order to make sure, a lot of people would say, oh, okay, I see. You need to just add a slot now outside of this. And then that way you'll end up with the right piece that fits in, which seems like it makes sense, but it doesn't because your um, tabs and slots actually have to be part of the, um, the whole thing. So 
you want to make sure you're in this eighth inch margin on each piece to make sure that it stays within the edges of this base that we have going on here. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take this and we're going to fold this in until it's at the inside of these. And you can see that nicely makes tabs for us. I think I think I'm getting these lined up here. Um, so then what we should be able to do, and I'm just gonna select everybody here since there's no need to do them separately, is we should be able to unite and that brings all of our tabs together. So this right now is a box design that you can then use a box on the bottom and do the exact same thing. You do tabs and slots, add tabs and slots here. Um, so for example, <clears throat> on the bottoms of these guys, we had quarter inch tabs that were made to the eighth inch material. So what we're gonna do really is we're gonna turn this on its side and the bottom doesn't really affect where you have tabs on top. So if you decide that your bottom is gonna be a base that's below this box, then you would have tabs outside. And if you decide that the bottom itself is actually gonna be hidden behind this box and it's gonna go inside the box, then you would have to have a slot that's built in inside the box like so. So what I like to do is I like to hide the bottom. So we're gonna add a couple slots and then I'm gonna show you how it is that you make sure that they match up with the bottom. So this guy then I'm going to come back over here and hold for the reflect tool. I'm going to click alt and hold that when I click the guide. It knows that I'm doing vertical because that was the last thing I did. I'm going to copy that over. And now before I do anything else, I'm going to drag the bottom over here, which let's go ahead and pull this down. And let's make sure that this is aligned like so. And we're going to come over here, <clears throat> excuse me, and we are going to duplicate these down to the bottom. Sorry. And what they'll, they'll become, because there's slots in this top part, they'll actually become, I need a little bit more room here, they'll actually become tabs in the bottom. So you can see right there how that will fit inside and it'll become the bottom for that piece. And the same thing all around. We're just going to do slots in the bottom on both pieces. And then this will have all of the tabs. And then that way, you know, it'll fit because we're not going to add the tabs on the outside. We're gonna do exactly like we did before. So if you have the tabs on the outside, your material is actually running here. So if I knew that um, I have, let's see, what did we make it a three and a half inch box? Then, oops, wrong way. <sighs> then what we're gonna do is flip that. And this is, say if you're looking down on it, this is the thickness of the wall. And so you see right here, the thickness of the wall is coming down and we're gonna do something hidden because the wall is gonna have gaps. So you can't have these guys outside of the wall. You actually wanna have them on the inside like we did before to make the tabs over here on the sides. So that's just me illustrating it. And then what we'll do is we'll actually pull that down like so. And you can see these guys will be minus front there. And then they'll slot right down on these guys, which will be unite, just like that.
So I'm not going to go through and do all four of these, but basically that's what you're going to have is you're going, actually I could real quick, let's not tonight. And this is a real easy kind of cheater way to do it. You copy right now, you select and then unite. And then you're going to take this and go. So control F. I'm going to pull this down just like we did before. Sorry, my eyes are dry from all the heating because uh, we have all this rain. So it's a little bit rough on me trying to get these to line up. Um, unite again, and we're going to select the whole thing. We're going to hold shift to constrain it again. We're going to control F to paste in front, drag it down. Oh, you know what? I might be doing this. I may want to use the uh, the white arrow for this to just drag down the line. I just realized I'm probably resizing these when I do that. So um, here, I'll show you on this next one. We rotate. It may not be off. I'll have to double check. I think it's fine, actually. Um, control F and pull down. See right now it's resizing that. So what you really should be doing is using the white arrow and selecting this point and this point together and then pulling them down across here. So it's not that much different. It's just making sure that you have everything sized correctly because I think now if we look, these won't be white point one two. see. And it's little stuff like this that'll probably be the vein of uh, design for you. Yeah, so you can see it's just a little tight. So you'll notice that it'll be a little loose if it's a tab. It'll be a little tight uh, if it's a, um, a slot because you can see you're going to try and fit this in because this is your actual thickness and it won't have the right amount of space here. So you don't want to scale, you just want to use the uh, white arrows. And then I'll just select this and this point. And then when you drag down, it goes to the point. I know it's hard to tell, but you can see it doesn't move anything else there. So you want to do that instead. All right. So I am going to just go with that for now since we've already gone. But yes. Um, okay. So now let me do these just so we have them. Oops, I didn't do those over there. So let me control the front. And we're going to take these guys. And we're going to match, actually, we're just matching here. Normally, I wouldn't do this because I would already have done the gap in um, previously before we even did the tabs and slots. Um, but this is fine because this is for uh, illustrative purposes only, right? So we're going to have this. Uh, centered is the key thing on, you can see there, there's the center mark and we want to do this and this to the center mark, which I was almost on. So I think, there we go. And you can see Ill Illustrator, excuse me, we need a bit of water. Illustrator is very helpful. It will actually help you out by pointing out when you're at the center of something, 
it'll point out when you're at the edge of something when you have other things that align with what you're doing so it's really um trying to be helpful in this entire thing that's minus front and there we go so there you have it is a pretty much basic box and i'm going to pull these guys out so we can go back to having that on all white here so now um what you can do is you can look at it and say what if i want to and um let's say in this case you want to add legs well let's move this guy out of the way and we're just gonna scoot him down right here. Legs isn't that big of an issue because you're not going to be changing anything about the structure of your design. So if you came in and said, you know what, I want a leg that's gonna make it so that this is, um, oh, what's a good height? Let's say it's a half inch tall. So we're gonna go with um, a quarter inch wide. <clears throat> Excuse me which I think we have enough space for um, looking at the design. And then I'm gonna go for the height is gonna be half inch. And so there you can see, we can probably actually do half inch by half inch with this. You'd have a leg that you wanna integrate. Now the leg doesn't affect anything here. Um, so like I said, let's, uh, let's pull it to the side. Actually, I think that's probably pretty good just to illustrate a couple of other things that I want to show. So we're going to pull it up so it actually is lined up there. And then I'm going to find a center here. I'm actually going to go to View and come down to Guides. And I'm going to clear the guides that I had. I'm going to pick this one up. And I'm going to come over here and add a guide so that I am able to duplicate stuff across without any problems. So right now I've just randomly decided that this is where this leg is going to go. And this is kind of a, you know, let's say it's an ugly leg, right? So <laughs> what we want to do is we want to kind of make this a little nicer leg. Um, one of the things that we can do is we can start making a marker. So for example, this is a half inch tall. Um, Let's see, let's do 0.2 out of five. It's gonna be the gap, oops, I wanted it the other way, sorry. Let's try this again. We're going to do 0.2 by, where did we make this widthwise 0.25? Ah, I'm still putting them in the right spots. It's not big a deal, okay. We're going to pull this over here and we're going to say that this then can be our guide to this is as much as we want to make sure that we don't affect anything more and we can actually pull this out like that because it's just a guide and let's change the color i like to use like cyan since that's the same color as guides then i'll use that as the guide in this case so now we have this box and we want to decide what we're going to do with it, what will make it more decorative. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a guide so we know where the tabs are. And we don't really, I think in this case, actually, it doesn't matter. We're not going to be affecting anything because we're going to be below where the bottom goes. The bottom is actually going to be sitting up here. And this will just be extra pieces that are on each side. So we can go all the way across to here. Um, so let me grab the pen tool that's up here, or you can click key. And we're gonna come off that corner. And one of the things I like to do is it's just kind of nice to have a curve. So we're gonna come over here and then we're going to hold shift so that we're pulling straight down. When we pull that down, it's gonna make a really nice curve for us. And we can curve it as much as we want because we're just coming off that point. So let's curve it like that. You can see that's already going to be prettier. I'm going to hit P again so that I'm loose on the pen tool. Um, and I actually want to be on V, which is the black arrow or direct select. And you can see now it was still selected. So it's selected here. 
And this is where I want to flip it. And we're going to go from the center of this post. So I'm just going to roughly eyeball this here. And oops, huh. that's because I had only one point selected. So black arrow, select again, come back over to flip, alt, go to the center. Like I said, I'm going to roughly eyeball it. And oh, Actually, it wasn't too bad. I'm going to copy it so that we have it over in both places. Now, this is nice because we can see that this is going to have to be a different shape, or we change the shape of the leg. Now, I can draw this back over, and you can see that that's where we made that corner to keep it tight. We'd actually I think that's around the same. So, we could come in here and we could say, okay, we're going to change this so that this is a nice even leg all the way down on both sides. Or we could say, you know what, we like the thickness of this leg. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to select this guy, hit the A key, that's the um, direct select. And that means you can directly select this point. Now this point we're looking at probably, I'm going to hold shift so it'll keep us going on a nice flat plane on the base. I'm going to pull it over here. So you can see that that looks like it lines up. And in this case, I think this has to be just a little bit down to line up. Right there. And it doesn't matter with these, um, this stroke line here because the stroke lines don't matter unless you outline it. Right now, the line is the only thing that matters. And as you can see, when we go to the outline mode, the line right here is aligned. So it's not quite a line down there. <laughs> the stroke got me a little, but that's why we have the outline mode. So you can see here, I want to make sure this guy meets as well and there they're both pretty much on so come back out of outline and that's what we've got and you can come back and say do i like this i think i do but let's kind of make a thick foot on this like kind of a you know the claw foot so it's actually kind of fun thing that we can do um we're gonna get, we're gonna leave the blue box for now, but what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do three small boxes. Oh, that's what it is, I have my, my uh, stroke is on the outside, or on the inside rather. So I think that's about a third, let's see. pretty good there. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come back in now that we don't need it and I'm select the blue line and I'm going to delete that. So now for these guys, what I want to do is I want to make toes so it's like it's the cloth. So for this, I'm actually going to um, look at both of these and I can see that I can round them. Now I can do this one by one, or I can do this as a group. So to make sure that they're all the same, I think we're gonna do them as a group. And, oops, I think I can just select them all right there. There. Um, and I think I need to go to there, the white arrow, because that's affecting each point. Um, let's pull up on the bottom here. Let, well, no, let's start at the top. This is the biggest curve that we're going to have. And we're going to just kind of do it in brown. Now you can see the bottom did as well. And that's because we had everything selected. So I'm going to hit undo. And I'm going to come back with the white arrow. And I'm going to select all of these one by one. 
And then you can see we're only doing the top. There are no little radius uh, balls right there. So come down, we're gonna do the brown toe. And then we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna select these and select that. Now you can see there's the balls again, and we just want to do a little bit to round these outside toes. So let's go a little bit more. And that kind of makes them the toe. We can just pull this down too if we wanted to. And so, oops, if we wanted to, we'll give it a little bit more length. Now, obviously, this is going to not need to be here anymore because we have all of this handle in our new design. And I think it looks pretty cute. Let's pull this, pull these two lines down, actually, so that we have a full foot. And, you know, honestly, this doesn't take a lot to do. And you can do something fun. This is just a real quick thing that I did in a few minutes. And now you take the whole thing and we're going to drag it over here. Or actually, no, I don't need to drag it. I can flip it. So if I reflect over here, we'll do the guide. Oh, see, that guide is terrible. We're going to copy. And I'm just going to reposition this a little bit. And by doing reflect instead of, oh, maybe the gap is different. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Pretend we're in a perfect world. Uh, but by doing reflect, as you can see, this curve is different from this curve. If I had just copied this over, then this curve would be here. Well, you don't want that to happen. You actually want this inside curve, which is a different, angle to be on the inside over here and then match. So I'm not sure why it didn't fit over there, but I'm just going to drag this guy in a little to meet up. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll just rub this. Like I said, it doesn't matter really because right now this is just doing it for an example. But as you can see, that's also something that you can do that's a real quick fix. Um, because when you come out at a distance or when anyone sees it, you know, they're not going to be looking back and forth at these and saying, oh my goodness, this curve is just a little off from what the other curve was. I doubt it. They might, but I Okay, so I'm going to copy this over to these other guys. And now this is when you can see that you need to adjust because we've actually made it fit the center. But because we have tabs and the um, sockets, then you have to adjust for um, basically for the space of it. It's just like the reason why we can't just do flats when we're doing it for the bottom. Um, we have to make sure that we have room for the material. So in this case, the material is there. So we can just make this be, since this is a tab, this can just be part of the um, gap. But I think I would probably just, you know, change this down a little bit. So right now, this is a fitting. So I'm going to pull this over so that the right fits. And then we're going to come over here. We're going to grab probably this full line. And we're going to bring it in because that's such a large distance. Now, I'm just going to pull these guys and center them. And yeah, that's a skinnier leg. But oops, I'm going to change where that is. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to notice, maybe, we'll see. So, yeah, that's pretty skinny. So maybe what we'll do then is we'll pull the lines back out and no one will notice. 
me. <laughs> so let's do this and we're gonna pull this back out to the middle of this guy. And we're gonna pull this back out to the middle of this guy. And we're gonna select both points and bring them up so that it curves. So there we have it. That then mimics the thickness. It doesn't quite have the same curve, but this is also then, you know, do, will people notice? And if you think they will, then you can grab them and say, you know, I think that this curve then has got to, oops. That. Oh. There we go. Oh, it's really hard. I'm going to go to outline here. All right, there and there. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, drag these handles up. And we're going to hope that that then gives us a nicer curve. And I can see it's not doing the two selected like I thought it would. Bear with me. I have a cold today. And uh, we're almost done. It's been an, almost an hour so far. So um, here, I'm going to undo, undo. We're going to come back to there. And what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to just push these guys up. And we are going to take them one by one. And you can see we can also pull this way. We don't really want to do that. So, as you can see, it gets kind of weird right there. We are going to pull up. And just kind of give it a little bit more curve than I have there. And like I said, I'm probably spending too much time on this because I want it to look good. So now I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to select these guys. Go up to flip. We're going to should be about here. Let's see if I can find that center. If it'll help us. I know a lot of times it'll help us around the center of this larger object. Just kind of guide us, but it doesn't seem like it's doing that today. So I'm going to guesstimate. I think I aligned this up. I'm going to guesstimate here and then we'll just modify it as needed. So there. Oh, that was almost right on. I'm just going to leave it there, actually. I think that's good enough. Um, <laughs> so now we can take both of these, and these are then going to hold Alt. We're going to duplicate these. You can see that on the arrow. We turn it into the double arrow. And we're going to pull these over. Like. There. And so what we want to do if um, we want to make sure that these are all connected is we are going to, and this is something that you may not know as far as like if you want to do something that's, um, in this case, we're going to have a cut line on the outside, we're going to have some score lines on the inside, but you don't necessarily want to have a, um, sorry, um, lost my train of thought. You don't want to have an outward, um, sorry, an offset stroke on this, an offset path, because if you do the offset path, nothing's going to fit. So in order to make this a shape, we're going to come here and we're going to hit Control J, which you can see then connected it and made this a shape. Now with these guys, we're going to say um, that the shapes that we have, <clears throat> excuse me, are going to stop here at these uh, anchor points. So when we do this, we're going to 
basically cut them into different lines. We know that these guys are going to be our cut line on the outside, but then these guys on the inside are going to be our score lines. So I'm going to copy this to keep it in our buffer just so that we can use it um, to reset if we need to. And it kind of makes it easier that way because if we do this with the white arrow, the direct select, then we can come in and we can select just this line on each of these, which each of this line is going to be a um, score line. And those are all gone. We probably want to go back through. It looks like there's some empty points right there. So then this becomes the points that actually tie together to be your cut line. First, we want to make sure that this guy is actually all joined there. In that case, you can see that it wasn't. So now that's got to get united with the base. And this is where we go in and clean up because it was quite in line. So we use the minus point tool, which is easy. It's just the minus sign to pull up. And then now you can see that they've joined. So the nice thing about that then is we can take the A, white arrow and we can select and remove that bottom that we had in. We're going to select these two points and hit control J on each side and then those become our cut line. And I know it's here. Okay so we have this guy who's a little bit long so I'm going to select that and we're just going to go straight up there until it's and these aren't going to be visible once we get up to this main thing. So now when you say, oh, but what happened to the toes? Right now it doesn't look like toes. Well, it kind of looks like toes. I'm going to select these and make sure these are joined as well, just to make sure our cut line is correct. Okay, so we're going to control F, which is paste in place, or I'm sorry, paste in front. And we are going to take the A to tool again, and we're going to select all of these lines. And of those, we're going to control X, which is to cut them. Now, that's exactly what we want to do, because now you can see all of those are going to get deleted since we've already made that. And then we're going to control F again, and we're simply going to change this over to, I like to use green as my score line. So now, you're going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, red. Actually, where did I go? That was red. There, I put it in here. Um, we're going to hit I for eyedropper. And we're going to select that. That means that this whole thing is red because it's all cut lines. And you see the green, that's actually the stroke if that makes sense to you guys. So you can set all that up before you do the multiples or you can set it up after. It's really um, how much you wanna do. And I recommend that if you're new to Illustrator, then you can set it up one by one and you get practice. The, long, the longer you do this, the more you do the same thing over and over again, the better you get at it. So that's kind of the best way of training yourself on doing anything is just to keep doing it. Do it over and over and over and over again. And then when you are on demand, you can just do it versus having to really think about it. You know what the basic structures are and you know how to get what you're after. So in this case, I've shown you to make a little claw foot box and um, with a, with a sun in it, with tabs and a bottom. So this should work if you actually do this step-by-step -step with me with the uh, numbers and everything. It might be a little bit off, you know, like I said, I'm not doing anything by exacting specifications right now because of the feet. Um, if you take the feet off, then the box should be perfectly fine. Um, it was more just in the, the layout of the feet and making sure we got our gaps correct or any of that, but it should be fine. So um, that's uh, actually a little over an hour. <laughs> Sorry about that.
and um, I will look for suggestions for next time. And I will keep doing sessions. Oh, here, let me pull it back up to camera so that there. So I will um, keep doing sessions at Wednesday at 2 p.m. PST or PT or PDT. I don't know which one I'm in right now, so I always just say PT. It's specific time. I'm on the coast in San Diego. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know what you're thinking about. Let me know what you want to learn, and I will devote a session to it. Um, if you're here for the session, then you can talk to me. Uh, the one that I did last week was actually kind of a back and forth with um, a couple of members of the group. So uh, that was really nice because I got to make something directly for them. And then I sent them the files afterwards so they could try using it. So um, they were pretty happy about that. And it gave me something to work on during the session. So I always want to make it so that people will go, come away from this with more knowledge. And if I can do that, then that's fulfilling my purpose. I want to help people learn. I want to help people grow. And in this case, you know, I want to help people make things because making something when you can think about it and then you can design it and then you can cut it on your laser and you build it. To me, it's, you know, we're two steps away from the, uh, the replicator on Star Trek, you know, it's, it's still got a ways to go, but I I really enjoy it. So I hope you guys will meet me back here at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays, and I'll see you then.